Okay, I know, I know, the subject is weird, but bear with me. <laughs> get it? It's funny. So back in the days of playing Diablo 2, there was a character class called the Druid that was my first exposure to the concept of the werebear. I figured it was a fun idea and it was an offshoot of the werewolf that was like a game balancing thing that didn't have much basis in the actual lore. But then it also showed up in Lord of the Rings and a few other things here and there. But where was the inspiration for these ideas? So I found that a version of the werebear actually shows up in multiple cultures, including heathenry. In fact, the term berserker seems to be rooted in bear magic, suggesting that these warriors had some association with the bear. They show up in multiple legends and are always regarded as very powerful warriors, though not quite werebears. Procopius, a Roman historian during the rule of Justinian in the 6th century, describes ferocious pagan mercenaries from the Danish islands going into battle wearing nothing but shields and thick jackets, which is similar to descriptions of berserkers in later legends. But these, these men were likely part of a bear cult of sorts, fanatical warriors who might have channeled the land spirit or landvetir of the bear. There is, however, another story about a man who could become a bear. This particular story comes from the saga of Rolf Kraki, a king who was known for having a great retinue of champions. The greatest and most loyal warrior among them was a giant of a man named Bodvar Bjarki, who would lift a berserker in full armor off the ground with one arm and then slam him into the stone floor with such a force that the berserker just lay there. Bodvar's parentage is described in this saga as being rather peculiar. This is the story of a man named Bjorn, uh, which means bear, a name that's commonly adopted by heathens today after their conversion. Bjorn was a prince in Norse legend of a kingdom in the far north of Norway. The king, his father, had remarried after the queen, Bjorn's mother, had died. He married a woman named Fit, but Fit was very young and the king very old. And the marriage it didn't go well. Bjorn eventually fell in love with his childhood friend, Bera, which also means bear, by the way. She was the daughter of a wealthy freeman in the kingdom who had amassed great wealth through raiding. And they would meet each other often as they grew up. And Bjorn would become large and strong and skillful in combat and whatever else he would set his mind to. But when the king would travel, he would leave the queen, Fit, now Bjorn's stepmother, in charge. She was terrible at it, but she had no idea that this was the case. She was under the impression that she was damned excellent at it, which we all know the type. The queen suggested to the king that the next time that he went out raiding, Bjorn should rule with her. That way, she can train him for the job in the future. The king thought that this would be productive, but Bjorn had little liking for the idea, much because he just didn't have much liking for the queen, as she'd become arrogant and overbearing. But the king forced the issue after a massive argument over the matter. Bjorn would stay behind and rule with the queen as the king left with his great army to go raiding. Bjorn went to his quarters and remained there for a time. The queen came to comfort him, but Bjorn wasn't interested and told her to leave, which she respected. Over the next few days, though, the queen was very nice to Bjorn and eventually floated the idea of sharing a bed to make their time together more exciting and interesting while the king was gone. Bjorn responded to this by promptly slapping her and throwing her out of his quarters. This enraged the queen. She stated clearly that she was not accustomed to being rejected and added that it seems that you, Bjorn, prefer the embrace of a commoner's daughter to that of a queen, and you must suffer a disgraceful punishment. She used her sorcery to turn him into a cave bear and cursed him to live with an undying hunger. He would have to kill more than any other bear in order to simply survive, forced to hunt on his father's livestock and wander the woods in his disgrace, and he would never be released from this spell and he would be aware of his disgrace for the rest of his haunting existence. And Bjorn disappeared. The king and his men went out and searched for him, but he was nowhere to be found. But it was said that in the land there was a large and ferocious gray bear that was killing the king's livestock in great number, and something needed to be done. One day, 
Berra witnessed the bear killing livestock. The bear saw her and approached unthreateningly. She was frozen in fear as the animal dwarfed her in size. But as it approached, she thought she could recognize Bjorn's eyes in the bear. Once she had collected herself, she did not run away. The beast turned away from her and walked into the forest. And Berra could not help but follow through the woods until night fell and she reached a great cave. She cautiously entered the cave and found a man who greeted her. She recognized Bjorn and ran to him to embrace him. And for a time, they stayed together until Bjorn told her it was not right for them to stay together. The curse was unbreakable. And he would be a beast by day, even if he became a man again at night. So here we see the dictate of werebear lore. Whereas in popular werewolf lore, the moon holds sway. But in werebear lore, the sun is what holds sway. As dawn approaches, Bjorn turns into a massive cave bear filled with bloodlust. But at sunset, he returns to manhood, haunted by the memories of his actions. Before morning, Bjorn explained to Berra that he had left three treasures for his sons in the cave guarded with magical runes. Berra was confused as they didn't have children, but Bjorn insisted their children would be unruly and strong and would take great care to raise, but to bring them back to the cave when they were of age to claim their inheritance, highlighting that even through a curse, Bjorn would make sure to provide for his family. The next day, the bear form came over Bjorn and he left the cave. Berra followed him for a distance, and saw him encircled and killed by the king's hunters. Berra was taken to the castle, where a great feast was held, and to Berra's shock, the main course was the bear. The queen forced her to sit at the table while the king and his subjects ate the flesh of his son. And the queen asked if Berra was hungry, and Berra simply said no. The queen accused her of rudeness and cut off a piece of the meat and forced her to eat two bites of the bear meat before Berra ran from the hall and the queen just laughed. Berra escaped, but she found herself pregnant with three sons and the bear meat had deformed two of her sons to have animal features because she had taken two bites of it, though she was forced. But Bodvar Bjarki was healthy. The saga follows all three of these sons who go on to accomplish great things but it focuses on Bodvar, who becomes a champion of the court of Rolf Kraki and proves himself to be a great warrior. At the end of the saga, King Rolf Kraki and his champions come under attack. The battlefield is chaotic, as it's a surprise attack, and Bodvar cannot be found. And yet, there is a giant bear on the battlefield, standing by the king, guarding him, tearing apart his enemies. The Saga of King Hrolf Kraki is a magical story filled with events such as these. I highly suggest that heathens pick it up and give it a read. It's medieval writing from a Christian monk, of course, and as such, it reads that way. There's some other stories in the saga that I'd love to cover, uh, including the adventures of Bodvar Bjarki and his brothers. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see more storytelling videos like this. I had a lot of fun with this, and I hope you did too. And I think it's important for us heathens to dig around our sagas, and tell these stories to each other. Because we are the keepers of our sagas now. And the storytelling is important to our faith. And with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. Hit that subscribe button and turn into a bear and ring the bell if you want to see more videos like this. And remember to find a way or make one.